We think flame cutting started in around about 1899. A chap in America called John Harris accidentally discovered it while he was researching the manufacture of synthetic rubies. John then took his invention along to the 1904 World Fair and over the years he continued to refine it, adding in little bits and pieces including things such as gas pressure regulators. He eventually identified really that flame cutting needed to be more accurate and more speedy if it was going to be used in a production environment and he then went on to develop a machine system which required a handheld roller following a wooden template plate and this had a single torch. This was known as a UR machine. Eventually this was then superseded by a magnetic roller following a metal template. During the 60s and 70s there were a few further developments which really improved the accuracy of the guidance system. So the first one was a light which incorporated a cruciform which was positioned over a black line and guided by an operator who followed the line and the cutting heads then produced the profiles. The second one and probably the more significant one was the use of a optical head or what was referred to as a magic eye and you can see a bank of of new magic eye machines in the photo here at Malt House in the early 70s. And this worked by the use of a pencil drawing which was made and then a line uh, added which was about half the width of the cut in black ink. This was then placed on a tracing table and the magic eye was positioned over the black line. Then uh, through the use of a powerful light and also a range of glass prisms the image was reflected through the glass prisms using a sensitive transducer which converted the image into electrical signals which then controlled with the machine. The next improvement came about in the mid 80s with the introduction of computer guided systems. And this meant that simple shapes were typically drawn on BBC computers which could then be downloaded onto Bernie controllers on the machines. As the computers got better and the software improved and confidence in them grew, the magic eye system along with the tracing tables were dispensed with. And what this meant was the cutting torches could then be set onto a gantry which gave them greater stability and also accuracy. It also meant that the overall footprint of the machine was greatly reduced, which meant that wider or longer profiles could be cut and also more machines could be fitted into particular bays. The process of cutting hasn't really changed all that much since John House's time. So we take a mixture of oxygen and a fuel gas, which is typically propane, mix that and flow it through a copper nozzle. That's then lit. This is then positioned over the surface of the steel plate. As the material heats up, the surface of the steel starts to melt at around about 1,500 degrees Celsius. Eventually the flame cuts through the steel and then through a combination of cutting heads and CNC controlled system, the shape that the customer has requested is then cut from the steel. As you can see from this clip, the material is placed on a cutting bed and this supports the steel as it's being cut. This is typically a steel box with an open front and back and then it has slats going across it which the steel actually rests on. This enables the slag and dross and small parts that are cut to drop into the bottom of the bed. These are then scraped out uh, using a system which is being developed and patented uh, within Malthouse. These steel slats as you can imagine become damaged over time uh, and they are then replaced as and when they're required. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what flame cutting is and a little bit about the history of the process and also how it's developed over the years. Uh, if you'd like any further information then please put a comment in the comment section below or send us an email at sales at multhouseengineering.com. Go to our website at www.multhouseengineering.com or give us a call on 0121 557 8455.